Hello and welcome to the River and Panhandle's weekly podcast. We are so excited that you are tuning in for this week's message. Before we get started, there are a few things that we would love for you to do. Share it, subscribe, and rate the podcast. So the message is about to begin. We hope that you are encouraged and that you always remember no role is insignificant. Every life matters and go out and make a difference. As we head into Thanksgiving, I was like, Lord, what I'm going to speak about? Well, the text that I'm going to speak of is going to come from, from uh, Luke chapter 19. But I said, Lord, and it's, it's probably a text I'm revisiting. I don't know if I preached it here. I don't preach so many different places. I get lost sometimes. <laughs> Y'all pray my strength to the Lord. Amen? But the text, the, t- the message is called Give Thanks. And it's the story of Zacchaeus. Y'all know when I say Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, the story of Zacchaeus. But y'all remember a little song. Where's my man Bray Bray? Where's Bray at? Yeah, I see you. All right. We got a son named Braylon too. You know that, right? That's our oldest boy. Anyways, remember this? Bray said, Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. Come on, y'all. To the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Amen. Y'all know I can't, I can't do it without singing a song. <laughs> so I got to tell y'all, excuse me. When you get, I, I told the brothers back there, I said, man, every time I'm getting ready to preach, all of a sudden the chest cold pops up. All of a sudden, the sinus starts jumping stupid. Y'all understand what I'm saying? All of a sudden, something's wrong, right? But you know what I told the devil? I said, devil, when you start trying to attack me, I know God got something in store. I know God has something in store. Amen, bro. If I had to whisper on the mic, I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Come on, somebody. Y'all know how I roll. Ain't no faking and shaking here. (laughs) Amen. Y'all going to get it all today. (laughs) <laughs> Glory to Jesus, I heard you. Amen. Luke chapter 19, verse number 1. Uh, I'm going to be reading this out of the NIV. Bless God. The Bible says this. Jesus entered into Jericho and was passing through. Jesus entered into Jericho and was passing through. If y'all know the history of Jericho, amen, God had to deal with them people in that place. Read your Bible, Old Testament. You ever heard of a man named Joshua? You ever heard of some spies? Hello. You ever heard some disobedient people? Shake your head yes on that too. (laughs) But God, but God, amen. And so when I was thinking about Jesus' entering into Jericho and they got word that Jesus was coming, amen, it almost turned into a parade. Y'all hear me? It turned into a parade. The Bible talked about how when Jesus, wherever he went, amen. See, some people think it was just Jesus and them 12 little dudes that hung out with him. (laughs) And, 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 And it wasn't even like that. Because as we read all throughout the New Testament, wasn't there always the so-called religious people that was trying to find cause to attack Jesus? Oh, y'all don't hear me. Well, check this out. Do y'all know that there's always people who are trying to attack you and your faith? Oh, now y'all hear me, huh? I'm not even with Verizon. Can you hear me now? (laughs) There's always going to be someone to try to attack your character when you proclaim the name of Jesus. You see what I'm saying? So on this little parade, 
Did I turn the mic off? Oh, we still got volume. Okay. I thought y'all kicked me out and I didn't even know it. <laughs> On this little parade, as Jesus entered into Jericho, verse number two, the Bible said this. It said, a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a thief. Y'all ain't reading y'all's Bible. <laughs> Stay with me now. The scripture says he was the chief tax collector and was wealthy. Mm, Zacchaeus. You know, if you study the name Zacchaeus, do you know that the name Zacchaeus means pure and innocent? Woo, help us, Holy Ghost. We need some fire. Fire. Come on now. Chief tax collector. Zacchaeus himself was a Jewish man, but he worked for the Roman Empire. In other words, Zacchaeus worked for the man. Woo! He worked for the man. He worked for those that was opposing his people. Y'all hear me? So, in the sense, Zacchaeus was shunned and despised by his own people because they considered him to be an outcast or a sellout. You see what I'm saying? He was pressing his own people, mistreating his own people. Y'all hear me? And then and, 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 and the Jewish people believed that the tax collector could not even be forgiven for his sins. That's how bad this was. So let's not make light of it. Y'all, y'all got to get the whole story, get the whole picture. You know what I'm saying? Like Paul Harvey, you got to get the rest of the story, right? Bless God. Zacchaeus was looked down upon figuratively and literally. You want to know why I know? Let's keep reading. The scripture says in verse number three, he wanted, or King James, he sought to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. You see? Now, isn't that interesting that most times in the Bible it talks about When it talks about different individuals that Jesus encountered, it will talk about them being lame, being blind, dying, being resurrected by Jesus. But look at what the scripture said about Zacchaeus. It said he was a short, he was short man. You see what I'm saying? He was short. That's very important. Because see, check this out. When the scripture talks about how he sought in Hebrew, uh, when you think about when you sought or when you search a strong desire endeavoring to see, a strong desire endeavoring to see, you see what I'm saying? So Zacchaeus was not only blinded by the crowd, Zacchaeus was blind spiritually. Come on, somebody. Zacchaeus came up short in many ways. Am I talking to this morning? See, because there's a lot of folks that just religiously go to church and, and I believe in, in their heart they want to see Jesus, but they're coming up spiritually short. Amen. Come on, somebody. But Zacchaeus wasn't only physically short, but was spiritually short because of the condition of his heart. God, how does this happen? Well, you have to ask yourself, what's going on internally? What do you call yourself trying to hide from the all-seeing God? You see what I'm saying? And the reason why Zacchaeus was spiritually short and, his, and he had that heart condition and he was out of position with God. Come on, church. Even if I just only teach this message today, I pray you get it. You see what I'm saying? That he was spiritually short because his heart was out of position with the Lord. I said it just a moment ago, so I will repeat myself. We can get caught up in going through the religious motions of going to church, but if your heart is out of position with the Lord when you're sitting in the house of God, it ain't going to do you much good. Y'all still love me? Okay, all right, I'm going to keep on preaching then. Amen. (laughs) I know y'all don't ate too much turkey already. That's what the deal is. (laughs) He that has a mind to know Christ shall be known by Christ. Listen to me, church. He that has a mind to know Christ will be known by Christ. I said that Zacchaeus was spiritually short, physically short, the scripture said, right? But he still had a mind to know Jesus. That's heavy, y'all. And I, and I guarantee you, some of y'all, you won't get it today, but there'll come a day in your life you will get this. Glory to Jesus. I see you, Brent. 
Amen. Come on, man. In Jeremiah 29 and 13, the Bible says this. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You see what I'm saying? And see, so many, so many times, unfortunately, we can get caught up in going through the motions because we heard that Jesus is going to pass by, that we might just go to hang out with the crowd. Hello. I like that church, the river. It's a cool place to go, so I might just go hang out with those people. They're, they're pretty nice to me. Though I may not see Jesus, I was, I was among some cool people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it don't work like that, baby. Jesus said you had to seek him with your, all your heart. So Zacchaeus ran ahead. The scripture says in verse number four, this, so Zacchaeus ran ahead, and he climbed up in the sycamore fig tree to see Jesus since Jesus was coming that way. Watch this, church. This is, this is powerful, and please don't miss it. Even though Christ Jesus hadn't fully revealed himself to Zacchaeus, he still positioned himself or humbled himself to be blessed by Jesus. Somebody should have hit that Ric Flair for me. Woo! <laughs> Come on, somebody. Even though Zacchaeus didn't fully know who the Messiah fully was at that time in his life, he still positioned himself. Come on, y'all. Help me preach this this morning. Glory to Jesus. The Bible says that he's climbed up in a sycamore fig tree, right? But, so that means, in a sense, Zacchaeus had to go up to get down before the Lord. What do you mean, Pastor Joe? Well, I'm glad you asked. Watch this. The Bible says in James 10 and uh, 4 and 10, the scripture says this, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. <laughs> you see how that ties together now? Zacchaeus climbed up in the tree, but in a sense, Zacchaeus was humbling himself before the Lord that he might see Jesus. And the scripture says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Amen. You know, I say this all the time, so I'm going to say it again. If man make you, man will break you. Oh, you're my bestie. Let's put it all over Facebook and Instagram. Guess what's going to be on Facebook and Instagram when they don't want to be your bestie no more? All your business. Amen? They're just going to be reading your mail on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> Woo! Come on, somebody. Verse number five, the Bible says this. When Jesus reached the spot, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, he said to Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Woo, come on, somebody. Stay with me now. Don't fall asleep now. This is getting good. <laughs> when Jesus reached the spot, the scripture says he looked up. He says, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house. You know what comes to my mind, sis, when I read that scripture? Jesus wanted to abide with Zacchaeus. Woo, church. Jesus wanted to sup with Zacchaeus. He wanted to spend time with Zacchaeus. Do you know what can happen to your life when Jesus wants to spend time with you? Do you know what can happen in your life when you want to spend time with Jesus? <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Now, I want to say this because my mama's in the house today, y'all. Glory to Jesus. If that had been my mama and I was up in the tree, she would have said, boy, get your little narrow tail out that tree. I'm just picking on her. That's my mama, though. Because one time I was up in the tree and I fell and I ended up with stitches in my head. <laughs> you remember that, Mom? Yeah, well, that's another story. That's a whole different message. <laughs> but here's the cool part about it, that the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit just this morning, bro. That Jesus saw Zacchaeus long before Zacchaeus saw Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. Jesus saw Zacchaeus long before Zacchaeus saw Jesus. Now, how does that relate to you? Amen. How does that relate to me? Jesus sees us. He knows every part of, about us, everything about us, long before many of us truly see Jesus. Amen? 
Jesus knew right where Zacchaeus was physically, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Jesus saw Zacchaeus long before Zacchaeus ever saw Jesus. And God knows right where you and I are right now. And I'm not just talking about in this building. The Lord knows right where we are right now. Amen. In the spirit of our mind, he knows right where we are. He knows if this word is being absorbed or deflected. Amen. He knows that he might be knocking on the doorpost of your heart. He knows if you open up or you really close the door and tell everybody you did. Amen. Jesus knows right where you are right now. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally, Jesus knows. And God was saying to Zacchaeus, this is really deep, y'all. God was saying to Zacchaeus, God in the flesh, Jesus was saying to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, I see you. Zacchaeus, I see you. Church, there's a lot of folks that will grace the doors of the church, and they feel like no one ever sees them. Whether it's at the loft, at the river, tell the truth, amen. A lot of folks will regularly attend worship service and feel like they've never been seen. You understand what I'm saying? Glory to God. But Jesus wants to let you know today he sees you. He sees you right where you're at. Jesus sees you. Glory to God. And Jesus was declaring to Zacchaeus when he said, Zacchaeus, I see you. Even though those other folks don't want to see you, I see you. And Jesus was declaring to Zacchaeus that, you know what, I love you so much so, and you're valuable, and you're worthy of my love. All these people that are around Jesus, make no mistake about it, if y'all can see the picture for yourself, amen, Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I see you. You're valuable, and you're worthy. Amen? Jesus said, I see you. You're valuable, and you're worthy. Glory to God. Amen. See, how I know this is a, because I know, and I said this the last time I was here, I, I remember that our God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. Our God is omniscient. He's all-knowing and all-seeing and all-wise. Our God is omnipotent, having unlimited power and able to do everything. Bless God. But fail. Hallelujah. Jesus said, church, I see you. I see you. Glory to God. When Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I must stay or I must abide at your house today. What does the scripture going to say in verse number six? It says, so Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed Jesus gladly. Look at that, church. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. You want to know why? Because many of us, we have been blessed to have nice homes. We live pretty comfortably, y'all, 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 wouldn't y'all agree? But how many of us have invited Jesus into our home? Amen? Or how many of us get caught up in going through the motion, and there's so much confusion, so much hell happening in your home, and then one day the Holy Spirit will shake you and wake you and say, you know what? I haven't been invited into your home. I haven't been invited to abide with you. You know, you want to know why your, 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 your home is dealing with experiencing so much trouble and tribulation, why your husband or wife don't want to act right, you know, or why your children don't want to do right? You haven't invited me in. Glory to God. Amen. Notice how Zacchaeus responded to Jesus' invitation. He didn't give Jesus any excuses. But immediately, Zacchaeus welcomed Jesus and accepted Jesus into his heart and into his home. Isn't that wonderful? Because that's the message today. That if we don't believe in Jesus, amen, his death, burial, and resurrection, amen, and that Holy Spirit that came on the day of Pentecost, if we don't accept Jesus in our heart and into our home, it won't be any good. You will struggle through life. 
until one day the Holy Spirit shakes you and wakes you and says, Jesus said, I've been knocking this whole time. Won't you let me in? Won't you let me come? Amen? Bless God. Verse number seven. All the people saw this. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone into, to be a guest, a guest of a sinner. Wow. He has gone to be a guest of a sinner. And you know what really struck me about that particular verse of Scripture is that if they had truly believed in Jesus, because they all wanted to line up to see who he was, they all knew the Old Testament Scripture, so they all knew that there was a coming Messiah. And some said that they were lining up to see the Messiah. But as soon as the Messiah came to do what God sent him to do, all they did was talk bad about him. They muttered, the Scripture says, that he has gone into the house of a sinner. But I read in my Bible, Pastor, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen? And so I say that to you, church, to say this, that how often do we see people come through the doors of the church? And, uh, and I'm not picking this morning, y'all. I'm just preaching. Y'all pray my strength in the Lord. Amen? But how often do people come into the Lord's house, and when God comes in and takes residence in their heart, we're like, oh, 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 you know what I'm saying? We're thinking these negative thoughts that we shouldn't be thinking about that individual. We're kind of ostracizing them. And Jesus is looking at you like, look, if it wasn't for the grace, my love, grace, and mercy in your life, where would you be? What would they say about you? Amen? You know, Jerry, when you call me, man, one of the main things I think about, and I usually text you this too, is I'm grateful just to come and help serve. Amen? Say nothing about preaching, nothing about teaching. What did I say? I'm, I'm grateful just to come help serve. Amen? If you call me and say, Joe, we need to come set up tables. I'm coming up setting up tables. Amen? You call and say, uh, we need you to come and help sweep the floor. I'm coming to help sweep the floor. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Amen? Don't call me for that. No, I'm just playing. You call me. I, I will come. I really will come. <laughs> I heard you. Folks want to just mess with you when you're preaching. Pastor, get ready. <laughs> I'm just playing. I love y'all so much. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I see you. And Jesus was telling the crowd, he's worthy. Jesus is telling the crowd, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of my love. You're worthy of my forgiveness. Amen? You're worthy of my healing and deliverance. You're worthy. Glory to God. You know, my mom is sitting here, so I got to say this one more thing, and I'm going to move, amen, is my mom used to always tell me, and this is true, she used to say, son, if they're talking about you, they're giving somebody else a break. <laughs> Didn't you, mom? She, I'm just telling all her business right now. <laughs> amen. And y'all got to keep in mind, my mom had 15 of us, 11 girls and four boys. That lady right there gave birth to 15 kids, and she had something for all of us. Amen? And I'm one of the babies. Amen? Church, please always keep your faith and focus on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Always keep your faith and focus on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus had gone to be a, a guest in a sinner's house. But in Mark, Mark 2 and 17... What does the word of God say? It said, on hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So Jesus had an answer for them already, didn't he? He said, I didn't come to call those who think they know it all already. I didn't come to call those who are so, think that they're so healthy because they have Dr. So-and-so next to their name. I didn't call those that think they know it all. I come to call those who are sick, the sinners. You see what I'm saying? Bless God. And not that Jesus won't bless the other folks, amen, but you have to have a heart of repentance. You have to have a heart of repentance. Glory to God. Verse number eight. 
Well, before I get on to verse number eight, I want to say this little line, this little line that I wrote in my notes. It, when Jesus saw Zacchaeus, Jesus saw a man that was, that was deeply wounded and hurting. And what do we know, church? Hurting people hurt people. Y'all see me? Hurting people hurt people. So Jesus knew that somewhere deep inside, Zacchaeus was hurting. That's why he was doing the things that he was doing. And Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I see you, and I don't want you to hurt no more so that, that you don't hurt anyone anymore. Amen? Verse number 8. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. When you have a sincere encounter with Jesus, your life will never be the same. Ask me how I know. The scripture just told me that when Zacchaeus sincerely encountered the true and living God, he stood up and said, Lord, all the wrong that I've done, I'm willing to return it. You understand what I'm saying? Whatever wrong I have done, Zacchaeus repented. Y'all see it? You read it for yourself. Amen? Zacchaeus had the heart of repentance. Zacchaeus didn't debate if he, had, if he should change his life. He responded right away. He wasn't concerned about what people would say about him. He only desired to follow Jesus and be obedient to God's will for his life. That's what it's all about, church. Zacchaeus didn't sit there and wrestle internally and say, you know, maybe I should do these things. Maybe I should do this. No, he stood up, the scripture said, and he repented. Bless God. If we can go ahead and have the music up as we prepare to close. Verse number nine. Jesus said to him, Jesus said to Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. What does that mean, church? Watch this. By faith, and, by faith and obedience, Zacchaeus was naturally and spiritually the son of Abraham, but he was the son of God. Naturally, he was the son of Abraham through lineage, but spiritually, he accepted the son of God. And Jesus said, Jesus said, not Joe, not Brent, Jesus said, Today, salvation has come to this house. Amen? I don't know about y'all, but I want the salvation of the Lord in my house each and every day. Each and every night when our baby boy asked me and his mommy to come pray for him, I said, look at the salvation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Invite Jesus into your home. Have a true and living encounter with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Verse number 10 wraps it up. Look what the scripture said. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. For the Son of Man, for Jesus, came to seek and save the lost. I read in my Bible. The scripture said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And the next verse said, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That's what the Bible said. Church, I'm going to say this as I prepare to take my seat. Bless God. Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. Many people read this particular verse of Scripture, this, this text that we read today, and they think that Zacchaeus found Jesus. But Jesus already saw Zacchaeus. Amen? And you've got a great many of people that say, when I get myself together, then I'll come to Jesus. i got news for you, baby. Jesus sees you right where you're at. And the beauty of it all is that he desires to come and abide with you. Amen. I'm a living witness, bless God. 
You know, I'm so, so, so grateful that my mother's here today, amen. Because y'all know through the years of being blessed to come here to minister, I've talked about my mom many a times, amen. And I talked about all the abuse that she suffered at the hands of my father, amen. And my mom told me a story I'll never forget. She said, baby, when I was tired of being beaten, when I was so tired of being abused, there came one day. And she loved the Lord since she was a child. Her grandmother took her to church all the time. And she's always been faithful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that I know of. And my mom said, your daddy would beat me so much so it came one day. She said, I, got, I went to upstairs to the room and I kneeled down at this chest that we had at the foot of our bed. And she cried out to the Lord Jesus, Lord, I can't take this no more. I'm tired of being beaten. I'm tired of being abused. She cried out to the Lord, Lord, I'm ready to go. I'm tired of being abused this way. And in that moment, Jesus said, Eddie, I see you. Eddie, you're not alone. Amen. If you will, please stand. Jesus said, I see you, daughter. All that pain that you've been suffering, all that abuse that you and your children have been suffering, I see you. Amen. And Jesus said, daughter, I want to remind you that I'm still abiding with you. I'm still here for you. But we need to know that without a test, there would be no testimony. Glory to Jesus. And my mom went through one heck of a test. And to me, she's a living testimony. Glory to Jesus. Because I got a feeling in my soul that if Eddie Gaines didn't make it, Joe Tindall wouldn't have made it. Amen. But God. Amen. But God looked beyond our faults and he saw our needs. And that day that when my mother looked down at that chest and she said, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh God. Sending them the need of prayer. God showed up and he showed up. Amen. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, church. You don't even know. But then again, you may. The only reason I'm sitting here preaching today is because I witnessed my mother's faith in Christ Jesus. And I said, Lord, if you can bring her through all that trauma and through all that hurt, amen. And Lord, if you can see me through my own circumstances in life, I made a vow to the Lord. I'll serve you all the days of my life. When my brother calls me and texts me on the phone, the Holy Spirit said, go, son. You go, amen. I'll give you words to speak. And I can tell you, church, that it's like fire shut up in my bones. Amen. And even when my flesh don't want to go, the Holy Spirit said, boy, you better go. Amen. Because it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about my Lord and Savior. It's about your Lord and Savior. His name is Jesus. Amen. Don't put your trust in your, in your bank account. Don't put your trust in the things that you have. Don't put your trust in people. Amen. Serve them. Honor them in God in Christ Jesus. But put your hope and your trust in Jesus. Amen. Let every heart pray. Father, we do thank you in the name of Jesus for your goodness, grace, and mercy. Daddy, we thank you that down through time, Lord God, you look beyond our faults and you see our needs. Father God, I thank you that you're a healer and you're a deliverer and a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. And just like Zacchaeus, Lord God, you know right where we stand, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, Lord God, you know it all. So, Daddy, we praise you this morning. And, Father God, I pray today, Father God, because I don't take for granted that if there's any in the house today that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, they will come running saying, what must I do to be saved before it's everlasting too late? While the blood is running warm in their veins, Father God, and the Holy Spirit is speaking expressly to their heart that they will welcome Jesus into the home, Lord God. Into, into their heart, Lord God, into their soul, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Daddy, that you love us so much so. And, Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, and the church said, amen. Amen. Y'all give God a hand clap of praise. As I prepare to take my seat. And that's this week's message. We hope that you are encouraged and inspired. If you would like to join our online campus, 
and experience the service as it happens live, go follow us on Facebook or YouTube by searching The River in Panhandle, Texas. Have an amazing and blessed week.